Hi, I'm Bridget, and um, as promised, my next um, basket project is going to be the figure eight stitch. Um, we're going to do the exact same size basket we did the first time, and we're going to use the same bowl, my um, little antique bowl here, to use it for a form so that the bowls will be very comparable, but then between the two of them you can see the difference. Um, we're going to um, use a different color. I didn't want to get boring and have all my baskets the same color. So what we're going to do first is, oh, and that's another thing we're going to do. This time, instead of cutting the pieces, I'm going to, um, I ripped them all. So they're very uniform in size, but they've got the frayed edges. So it's going to be a different effect on that too. The first time, we're going to roll a little bit on the beginning. And then I'm just going to tack the end with a knot here on it. Um, just to catch the end of the fabric. And then I'm going to wrap a little bit farther. Okay, so now I've got a little piece like that. And then I'm going to take it and make a little, little circle right there. And we're just going to take the needle and thread. And we're going to sew it across on the back here. Just so my little um, circle stays closed. That's about the last sewing we're going to do until we join another piece. A lot of people um, knot the material or do any number of other things, but um, I like to sew them together. Okay, so now we're going to um, wrap enough of the rope to go around one time about halfway around my little circle. Now here's where the difference is going to be. Um, instead of coming oh and I don't have my needle on the end of my material. I need to get a needle on the end of my material. I'm just using my plastic needle like the last time. That way it doesn't poke through my fabric. It only pokes through the holes between the fabric. Okay. So if I was doing the squaw stitch, I would just come up underneath here and come back in. But instead, we're going to do a figure eight and we're going to come back up and over and in. Okay, now this may not seem much different to you yet, but you'll see when we get a little further along. I want to make sure that we've got the right sides of our fabric on the outside. And the very bottom is not going to make much difference. You're not going to be able to see the difference much until we get So now, instead of just coming up, we're going to go, instead of just coming from the bottom like we normally would, we're going to go over and under in an eight, which is going to mean, now, when we go to the next part, okay, here we are. So our next part, we're going to go back down under and over before we go to the next, okay? So instead of just, so normally with the squaw stitch we would just do this over our, th our next row, like that. But instead of doing that, we're going to go under, twist so we're on the right side, and then back. Now you see what the difference is? Right now there's no bands that go across it. Okay, all we're seeing is come up, I'm going to twist it because of the right sides of the fabric. We want to twist it a little bit so that it comes up. Now we're going to turn it around so the right sides of my fabric are showing. And then we're going to twist it 
and figure eight it before we start wrapping. So now we see what the difference is here. All you're seeing is your cord. You're not seeing any lapping um, bands. Okay. I'll do this again. Two wraps. Now I'm going to go up through the bottom. Up through the bottom. Now I've got the wrong side facing, so I'm going to have to twist it around so the right side's facing. Then I'm going to wrap it that way. Then I'm going to turn it around in this little figure eight before I start wrapping. So. So there it is. So I'm going to keep doing this until I have the bottom because I think you'll be able to see the stitch a lot better when I've got the bottom finished and I start up the sides and it's a straight side. All right, we're up seven rows. I changed to a yellow. You can see what happens, unlike um, on the other basket with the um, with the squash stitch, the um, little patches are just like a dot in the existing row, and all the rows are just singular. There's no up-down coating. So, um, but now I'm going to show you how to do the figure eight with the yellow because I think it's easier to see. We're going to come up. We're going to go this way from the back. Now we're going to wrap twice. One, two. Then we're going to come from the bottom or the back out. So you can see the eight was it's up, back, over, and then back out. So you can see it's I'm going up and over and back and out. So I'm going like this to make sure that it's an eight. That's why it's it, each um, row looks like a band. I'm going to do it a couple more times to see if you can see what I'm doing. Okay, one, two. Then I'm going to come from the back. I'm going to come from the back. I'm going to, that's the bottom of the eight. Then I'm going back over and then back. And now I'm going to rotate a couple times before I do an eight again. Okay, so I'm going to do another eight. So, I'm coming from the back. Okay, come through this part of the eight. Then I'm going to go back and over. And then I'm going to go over twice. So you can see where my 8 is, okay? Now this isn't very tight here because uh, I'm doing this for the camera, so I'm going to tighten it up. I'm going to do a couple more rows of the yellow, and then I think I'm going to switch to another plain color. I've kind of decided to make this bowl a little rounder to come back up um, instead of like the um, flared basket that I made the last time. Just decided to try something a little different. So um, I'll probably go about another 3-4 more rows, and then I'll come back and um, we'll finish it off. All right, now we're um, up about the same height as the other basket. It pulled in. It, I had a lot of trouble without a form keeping it from pulling in. So I think if I did this one again, I would really have to push it on the form a lot. Um, I finally just gave up and let it pull in and became a different shape than this basket that I actually use the form. This basket's a softer basket. This one is, is kind of hard and um, tightly done. And not because I was trying to be tighter or because of the fabric I'm using. I think it's the stitch. Um, the stitch is just a tighter stitch. Now, um, I'm, I did the um, four or five, four rows of the yellow and you can see where the bands are. Um, it's just a band, whereas you can see on the other one, um, you can see where you can see where the um, attachments went. And on this one, you can't see the attachments all. It's just bands of color. So it's a different stitch, a different feel completely. Now I'm going to do exactly the same as I did with the other one, the other basket. I'm going to, I've got the last of my um, 
rope here and I'm just going to do my figure eight stitch in from the bottom um, and I'll just do my figure eight stitch till we get out here to the end. It's also really hard to find, by the way, the, um, the holes on this particular stitch. Um, it's, uh, it's just tighter. Yeah, let's see here. Okay, here we go. All right, so here we are. We have the last of it, and there's the edge of the rope. Um, where it's been pulled through and I'm just going to do a couple more stitches in this place and then probably do one more over so that um, the rope is clearly covered. We don't want the end of the rope to come out. So here we have the ropes covered. Um, it's nice and smooth here. Um, we've got the end, and I'm probably just going to feed this end back underneath a couple of these loops and cut it off, and then we'll be done. So this is um, our rope basket with the um, figure eight stitch. This is our rope basket with the squaw stitch. Um, the next one we're going to do is going to be one with, um, we're actually going to wrap the entire rope and then do a, um, a stitch with a, a thread over it. And that's a contrasting uh, color. So that will be a lot of fun and something just a little bit different.